What's going on guys? I uh, wanted to do another overview video on Monolith DKP. The uh, add-on went through quite a bit of drastic changes since the last version. Uh, a lot of player requests went into it. I tried to get everybody, but uh, there may have been one or two that I missed. Um, maybe later. Anyways, uh, just this is probably going to be a long video. I'm going to try and cover everything in the add-on and I will throw some links below to kind of jump around in the video with different uh, uh, bookmarks and such. Uh, first thing I kind of wanted to go over how to set up the add-on, the permissions and such. Uh, players in the add-on are considered officer if they have permission within the guild uh, to make, or sorry, rather to view officer notes. That permission there is what grants them officer status within this add-on. If they don't have that permission, they will just have a normal player status in which they can only view the filters tab, uh, loot history and DKP history, and then some of the options, these right down here, they won't be granted any access to any of the management uh, functions within the add-on. Another thing to note is uh, the add-on uses public notes right here to keep um, the the seed for all the different tables basically it's a timestamp that tells everybody whether or not they have updated information or not if they don't they can request that information from an officer that does um, i'd highly recommend you do not grant access to that information or to the uh um, to public note writing for the general population of your guild just keep that to officers if that public note on your guild leader does get altered, it could throw everybody's table as being out of date, at which point you can't change anything. Uh, to fix that, you would just simply uh, remove the guild leader's note entirely or change it to zero or something like that, and it uh, will recover on its own. The next thing you're going to want to do when setting this up is to go to the different options areas and set all the information that is uh, rel uh, relevant to your guild set your bonuses on time bonuses boss kill new boss kill etc set all those uh, to the proper settings uh, set these to the proper DKP settings and such you'll want to go into the DKP modes tab and uh, set what kind of DKP you plan on using along with uh, all the pr other parameters with it anytime you change something in this window you need to reload your UI. If you don't reload it, it's going to throw errors. You will be prompted when you close it, but if you don't reload it, it's going to throw errors when you try and do something because the functions being used drastically change. So what we're gonna do to start real quick is we need to uh, get some names in this list. And the way to do that is in the match tab. You can go to, uh, you have add raid members, add guild members, and add target. Add raid members adds everybody in your party or raid to the list as long as they're in your guild. It will not add anybody that's not in your guild. Uh, this is to filter out any kind of pugs or uh, anything like that that may be in your party that you don't want to add. Uh, add guild members adds everybody in the rank you select and above. So if you select core here, it's going to invite, or rather, it's going to add core, officer, officer, everybody above it. That's who it's going to add to the list. So if you want to add everybody, you just select the bottom rank. This is just to prevent adding alts and such if you don't want them in your list. So we'll go ahead and get some names in here. And now we need some DKP for them to toy around with. So we'll go and select all and I'll give them some DKP. Like that, I'll go ahead and give that to them. So now they all have DKP to play with. And for testing, we're gonna go ahead and reset that previous so everything's at zero. So right away here in the adjust DKP tab, obviously I already told you about this stuff right here. This is how you add or adjust everybody's DKP. Uh, down here you have weekly DK, or DKP DKs. If you choose that every week you DK everybody's DKP by a specific percentage, uh, you would do that here. That can be set right there. Uh, 
if you just hit apply here, it's going to apply it to everybody across the board. You don't need to select multiple people and tell it who to apply it to. Even if you have people selected, it's going to apply it to everybody. Uh, if you only want to apply it to specific people, you will add this. You'll check this select players only. Doing that will only apply the DK to those people. Also, if somebody is in the negative, they their DKP will not be touched by it. It won't. Uh, give them DKP it won't lower it anymore. It only affects people above zero if you want to affect the people below zero If you want their DKP to go up by this given amount, you'll check this add negatives value uh, Add to negative value checkbox that will uh, increase their DKP by the Given percent that you put into that box So if they have negative a thousand DKP for example and you check that and apply it to them they will get 200 DKP and drop down to negative 800. So over here we got the raid timer. This is if you want to use hourly DKP. Um, this is going to apply DKP to everybody in the raid and the standby list if you have this checked. Uh, I'll go over how to use the standby list shortly. Uh, interval is how many minutes you want it to apply the hourly bonus so to speak uh, if you want to set it to apply it every 30 minutes if you want to set it to apply you know every 15 minutes and drop the value down by you know a quarter however you want to do it really uh, the three options for it is give on time bonus give end bonus and include standby uh, give on time bonus basically just as soon as you click initialize it's going to give uh, this on time bonus right here for giving DKP for initializing, you know, everybody's on time, everybody's at the raid, they get a bonus for that and whatnot. End bonus is when you click end, that is when it's going to apply that DKP. So basically, the timer just ticks down uh, or ticks up rather, and it's going to tell you how much DKP it has given so far. Obviously there it didn't give anybody DKP that is actually because I am not in a raid so uh, Go and convert that to raid and now you'll see uh, My DKP up there is going to get the initial start DKP You can pause the raid if you want that's not going to interrupt anything you just continue and it'll start back off where it's going and then when you end the raid, of course, it's going to give the end raid DKP and show the total that you got throughout the course of the raid. Now for each of the other tabs, uh, first off, these tabs, like I said, depend on permissions. If they have officer permissions within the guild, or not within the guild, within the add-on rather, they are two different things. Uh, they will, if they're not officers, they will only have access to filters tab here, uh, loot history and DKP history as well as some of these options they'll only have access to these things right here and the suppress broadcast notifications option everything else is going to be hidden to them as far as the functions in the different tabs i already showed you this guy right here how to add and remove people to the uh, dkp list um, at the bottom here, this is to broadcast all of the current tables to everybody within the guild. This, these broadcasts are guild-wide, not raid-wide. So everybody that's online will get those updates. Uh, broadcast DKP table is this guy right here. It broadcasts that. And broadcast loot history is everything right here. And then the DKP history is everything right here, which just... Uh, lists off all the different changes to DKP you made, deductions, uh, raid bonuses, etc. Another thing to note is right here, this character actually, actually isn't a guild leader, so he can't see it. There is a whitelist section right here. I recommend that be left alone by a majority of people. It was requested for a very niche audience. Um, it essentially restricts permissions to officers. You can't whitelist regular members of the guild and expect them to have permissions. It'll get messed up on their side. They will see the stuff that officers see, but anytime they try and change something, they're going to uh, be throwing errors for people. So it's, it's to restrict 
permission to officers. If you have four officers in the guild that have uh, right to officer note permissions, but you only want two of them to be able to edit the DKP uh, system, you would put those two people on the whitelist and make sure it's broadcasted to all of them, uh, including the ones that are not on the whitelist. But as I said, it's best to just leave that alone if you can get away with it. For the options tab, again, this is where you're going to set all your default settings, your uh, default item costs here for different slots. Uh, when you, there's another DKP mode the, uh, for minimum bid DKP mode. This is where you would set that minimum bid as well. This takes on those properties. Um, up here is where you go to DKP modes menu. Now this is where you're going to select where you're what kind of DKP system it is you want to use. Uh, you have minimum bid values, which is essentially uh, you set the minimum bid value for an item. Players can submit bids, and the highest bidder wins the item. Uh, you can do that privately through tells or in raid channels. You would set that up through this cha uh, command channels dropdown. Uh, Whisper, raid, and guild. Right now, all three of them are open, so somebody can bid in whisper to myself, in raid, or in guild. Uh, if you want to restrict that, however, to just raid or just whispers, you would just uncheck the remaining ones that you don't want open to commands. Um, static item values, that is just your standard. Items have a static value no matter what, no matter who bids, the item is always going to cost that much DKP. Uh, for that, the command is just simply exclamation point bid, and then they, the bidders are placed on a list. Highest DKP wins the item. Role-based bidding is if you want to use rolling to determine who wins uh, a bid, um, you would set this up. Basically, you can use it without percentage or with a percentage, and this is based off of uh, the user's individual DKP. If you use this, just the regular integer rolls, setting this to zero, the max, is going to essentially use the player's highest DKP as the max roll. So if I have a uh, 200 DKP in this setting right here, my roll would be 200 to, or I'm sorry, 70 to 200. Whereas here, it's 70% of my DKP to 100%. And to show what that does, again, like I said, you have to reload anytime you change anything in there. So you'll notice in roll mode, in uh, the roll bid, there's an additional column here that essentially shows everybody what their roll would be based on the percentages given or the criteria given in that DKP modes window. For everybody else to see that, you will need to broadcast all the settings, though, once you're uh, done with doing it. To do that, you would just go down here and click the Broadcast Settings button. I'd recommend you use broadcast, uh, pretty much any of the broadcasts. I would recommend just using them like when you're at a raid or something, when everybody that is going to need it is online and available to receive the broadcast. Uh, it, 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 it's just probably the cleanest way to go about doing it. Sub-zero bidding here is an option in multiple of the settings. Basically, that simply means that um, somebody can bid even if the bid would put them into the negative. If you uncheck that, the, uh, the system is automatically going to reject any uh, bid attempts by somebody that is going to bid that would uh, that when buying the item it would put them in the negative if that's the case it's going to deny their bid entirely and the last system is going to be zero sum down here uh, zero sum is basically the same as minimum bid values and static item values here and you can actually select those two here depending on which zero sum system you use the only major difference between the two is in zero sum, the DKP distribution changes dramatically, and this utilizes that change. So 
if you want to put in minimum bid, of course, that's the same as the other minimum bid. Somebody submits a bid, highest bid wins. Static is static item costs. Everybody just submits a exclamation point bid with no value. Highest DKP wins. Uh, in static mode, they can bid into the negative. And they can bid still even if they have a negative score. Whereas in uh, when you had the... Uh, uh, sub-zero bidding checked they could only bid if they're above zero they could go into the negative but only actually bid if they're above zero if they go into the negative they have to wait until they have positive dkp again to, to bid in this in static they can bid in the negative no matter what uh, they just need to be higher than everybody else to actually win So since those are similar, I'm just going to go over the two zero sum, uh, two zero sum settings, and that you should be able to pretty much figure out the other two here from that. Down here you have DKP rounding. This is available in all the settings. This is uh, essentially just how many decimal points you want to use in your DKP system. It's probably recommended to stick with zero for most of your systems except for zero sum zero sum you're probably going to want to use two or three decimal places just because of how the system works it takes all the dkp spent and divides it evenly among everybody in the raid if you have zero uh, zero decimal points it's going to strip people of a lot of dkp that they would have gotten if you're if you would have gotten uh you know 1.4 dkp per person and you had this rounded to zero, that would get rounded down to one. And that's, you know, uh, the, you know that's like a 30 or 40% decrease in how much DKP they're getting. Uh, I would just avoid that. So we will go over real quick the context menu for the tables here. Uh, as you notice right away uh, up here, if you don't have anything selected, your uh, row is going to be a little more prominent the rest than the rest just so you can kind of identify your information quick and off the bat just by opening it uh, just makes it y your uh, standings just a little more visible to you uh, as far as context menus go <clears throat> this is uh, you can select different views as well as uh, create a standby list the way standby list works is if you have a raid and you have people on standby and you want those people on the standby, even though they're not in the raid, you still want them to get DKP, you would utilize that view. So you would, uh, if you want to, say, add a bunch of people that are uh, outside of the raid to standby, do that, right-click, add selected players to standby, and I have these seven players selected. We'll go to standby list, and these are those seven that you added. Now, it adds them in the order that you clicked them. So if you add people to the list, this that's the order that they're going to show up in. The top one is the first one you added. Uh, you'd l use that to uh, distribute DKP to everybody, including standby. So if you go to view raid and standby here, uh, this would show you everybody that's in the raid and everybody that's in standby. And then from there, you can simply select all uh, on time bonus, for example, apply that to everybody there. So that's uh, one way to uh, give DKP to people that are maybe just waiting to get into the raid. Another setting here is core raider list. This is just going to list all of your ranks available in your guild. And you're going to check which ranks you consider to be your core raid team. The reason for this is in the views here, you can go to core raiders and you can quickly select all and invite selected and it'll invite all of them to your raid. Uh, makes for quick, easy raid forming and such. Of course, there is also the class filter here, which that it actually only works in the, if you click it, you're gonna go back to the main uh, view it only actually works there right now. So if you want to filter people out, you just do so that way. So now I, we will go ahead and demonstrate the, uh, the actual bidding systems in place. Uh, it's pretty straightforward and pretty easy. Now, one of the uh, common confusions I've received is um, 
this window here, they believe that they're concerned that other people are going to see that window. This window only pops up for the person hosting the bid. Everybody else in the raid doesn't see anything. They don't see any values. They don't see who's bid. They don't see anything like that. So if you if you're worried about keeping bids uh, secret and you're doing your bidding through whispers, nobody's ever going to see any of that information. So you don't have to worry about that. Also, another thing to note is you would shift alt click, shift plus alt click an item to open this window. That will only work on this first page. Uh, uh, it's some deal with the API that I still haven't figured out yet. Um, but if you try and click something down here, it's going to click what's in that position on the first page for whatever reason. So you want to just do it on the first page. If all the items don't appear on the first page, you just loot the gold, come back to it, and all the items will be on the first page. So it's not really a big hassle. So this first one is zero sum static DKP, which means the cost is static and doesn't change regardless of who bids. So we'll go ahead and start bidding on that. And we'll bid in raid for that. Command is just simply bid. Uh, if you have enough DKP, it'll throw you on the list and it'll order from top DKP down from there. At that point, it's quite simply just select who wins, make sure the cost is what you want, and you click award item. Now, this cost can be changed, and if you do change it, let's say you decide that this one item is worth more than all the other wrist items, so you want this one specific item to have a higher cost. Uh, when you award that item, it's going to, from that point on, it's going to show up with as that new value and have this custom checkbox. Basically what that means is you uh, you can uncheck this box and it'll go back to its normal value or keep it on. If you award it with this box unchecked, it's going to erase it and it'll pop up as the default value from that point on. The same way works with minimum bids, except for it's going to be in the minimum bid box that will be up here and I'll show you that in just a bit. You notice when I awarded that item, it threw it up into this window, the zero-sum bank. This is what is going to be storing all the items you uh, people purchase, as well as how much they spent on it. The last one was 50 DKP that was spent. And we'll do another one real quick. We'll go ahead and up this to 70 just to give some variability. And we'll award that. Now you'll notice this goes up to 120. Uh, it just adds the two items together. Once you're done looting a boss, it's quite simple. All the items that you've listed that you've looted on that boss will be uh, listed here. And then what's going to happen is when you distribute, it's going to distribute this evenly among the entire raid. If you have include standby checked here, it's going to also distribute it among the. Uh, the standby list, which means everybody in the raid gets less DKP because it's being distributed evenly amongst more people. And now we'll go ahead and reset that. So you see all the zeros there. We'll go ahead and look at raid and standby, select all, go back to view all. So now you see only the raid and standby there. We'll distribute and you'll see it only gave it to those that are in the raid or standby. You don't need to select these people to do that at all. I was simply doing that to show you uh, that that is in fact who it actually gave it all to. And then that entry will show up right here in the DKP history as well as the items that were won from that boss. Now for the other system we're going to use uh, we'll go to minimum bid mode and again we have to reload on that this system is uh, considerably similar it's you're gonna load this up the same way the only difference is now it has a minimum bid this is the bid that people have to submit in order to be considered otherwise they'll be uh, turned down so if I start a bid and we do bid I let's say you know, 60. It's going to tell me dip bid denied. You're below the minimum of 70. So we'll go ahead and go above it and it accepts it. 
this list, instead of ordering people by highest DKP, it'll order them by uh, highest bid. Now, one thing to note in this setting, we'll go back into the modes window here, there is a cost auto update value. <clears throat> Basically, what this does is you can select first bidder, or second bidder. Second bidder keeps the uh, item cost at the min bid uh, minimum bid value unless there's a second, third, fourth, etc. bidder, at which case it updates this to whoever's in second. That way, whoever wins it ends up paying whoever bid just under them. If you have first bidder, then, and I'll go ahead and update that so you can see it, when you do have a bid, we'll go 100, cost updates to 100 here. So whoever's on the top bid, that's what the cost updates to. It'll always charge the highest bidder. And again, the custom uh, minimum bid here works the same way as it did down here. So go ahead and end that. We'll award it out. And we'll do one more uh, bidding real quick. And we'll do bid 60 and award the item. And then we distribute the DKP, and it again distributes evenly among the uh, nine players that we had in that DKP list in the standby and raid. One other thing to note is in this DKP modes window, uh, you're going to want to broadcast all these settings to everybody. Uh, that's another thing you can do at the beginning of the raid. If you don't, if that, if your modes don't change ever, it's not something you need to broadcast frequently. You just want to make sure everybody in the raid or in the guild is on the, has the same settings set. Uh, that's especially important if you are um, if you're using the roll bid method. Uh, they won't be able to see that uh, roll range column in their DKP window if they don't have that set for them. Uh, normal members of the guild that are not officers cannot access this window, so they cannot change it themselves. So um, the other loot systems are fairly self-explanatory. You can pretty much derive how they work from what I just showed you. Uh, one other thing we can go over real quick is the loot history and DKP history tabs here. Uh, this shows the loot that has been distributed. N uh, your average guild member has shift click and alt click availability up here. That just uh, shift click links the item, whereas alt click links the entire line like that. Officers, however, have a right-click context menu for both, uh, both windows. And basically what this allows you to do is if, let's say you gave this to the wrong person, uh, let's say, you know, somebody else actually wanted this item right here, uh, you can right-click, reassign, and this is going to not only uh, remove it from who originally had it, but it's going to give them back their DKP and charge it to the new person. So we do that, and this guy gets charged DKP while this guy gets it back. And it updates it in this window and broadcasts that change to the rest of the guild. Or you can just simply delete an entry if you want, and that refunds the person their DKP. Like that. You can also come up here, and there's a uh, loop filter uh, drop down right here. You can filter... Uh, stuff by the different players that have looted stuff this uh, this drop down will populate as uh, people loot stuff if a name shows it up as gray here that just means they're not in your guild or on this uh, dkp table in some way uh, dkp history tab this one is pretty straightforward it's it's literally just a list of all the uh, dkp entries you make anytime you give somebody dkp take it away etc etc uh, it gives, it adds, it throws it into this history. If you want to delete history, like you want to delete this one, you do that, and it's going to take that DKP in that uh, history element that you removed, it's going to take it away from people. So we delete another one, it's going to remove everybody from the DKP list. Or remove everybody's DKP that they earned. This does work with the decay. If you apply a decay to everybody, it does work with it. However, 
if you add DKP after a decay, then that's where it starts to get kind of iffy because the math simply can't figure out how much was 20% of their current value if you added to their value already. So if you're going to delete uh, a DK entry, do it immediately after you've used it, and then it'll hit the math right on every time. Do not decay the raid or the guild. Add a bunch of values to a bunch of people and then try and remove the decay. It's not going to give you the results you wanted. Uh, it'll be in the ballpark, but it won't be anywhere near precise. And that's really about it with the add-on. There's uh, not too much more to talk about. I mean, most of the stuff is fairly self-explanatory. People can figure it out. And if you're having problems with anything, read the tooltips. Um, uh, it seems a lot of people don't realize that I very uh, deliberately put these tooltips onto every single element. Uh, I'm trying to explain what everything does as detailed as I possibly can. So uh, look at the tooltips. They usually can clarify things. If you have questions, feel free to submit them. I'll do my best to answer. And uh, if you have any um recommendations or ideas um, i'm always open for ideas and i'm always trying to update this make it better so uh send them my way if you got any information um other than that everything else is uh mostly done with the add-on uh if you have any bugs or anything feel uh just click the link at the bottom to go to the github and uh submit a ticket on there and i'll do my best to try and approach it as quickly as i possibly can and feel free to uh, click the link to check out my stream. I'm going to start streaming with Classic. So I uh, figured I'd just do that for fun and see what happens. Uh, if you want to join me, feel free. Uh, thanks for watching and have fun.